Yeah, so in the, the last year or so, my lab in Rotterdam has focused on a, on a new technique, and this new technique is called transcranial direct current stimulation. Transcranial means through the skull. Direct current, direct current means that it's about electricity, but it's like really, really low voltage and really low current. And stimulation, obviously, is that we're going to stimulate your brain. So what does that do? So transcranial direct current stimulation makes you learn faster. And that's an urge that obviously all of us uh, must have had at some stage in our life, right? I mean, you're, you're studying on something and you just want to be able to grasp everything faster than you used to do. So how does it work? It's actually really, really easy. Um, if you stimulate, you just have to go to the hardware store somewhere and you do yourself some really simple shopping. You get yourself some sponges, you get yourself a battery, you get yourself some wires to connect everything, you get yourself some salt, and you're using these sponges and this battery together in order to, to make electrodes that you stick on your head and you need to know your neuroanatomy about where to stick them, and that depends on what you want to learn. So I have some more, slightly more professional electrodes over here. So you just stick it somewhere in your brain, and you take another electrode, and you put it on an arbitrary uh, reference place, that would be uh, over here. You connect the wires, you connect the battery, and off you go. You're a faster learner, and you can learn things faster than you've ever done. Thank you. So obviously, all your scientific skepticism at this time should be at the highest alert levels, right? I mean, there's... Because I'm, I'm making the sort of promises that you would normally only see uh, during a, uh, a Telcel <laughs> commercial. There's, there's this deep urge that we all have. There's this really simple solution that you can get. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you. It's what Telcel uh, thrives on. Um, as a matter of fact, if you, if you Google TDCS, or transcranial direct current stimulation, at the moment, and you go to the internet, you can see that TDCS has left, has more or less reached the uh, Telcel level. You can buy an apparatus for a mere $250. It's, it's aimed at um, the gaming population, so, so it's aimed at people who do computer games and who want to improve the skills as quickly as possible. You buy this device, you put it on your head, um, and you're, you're set to go according to this, this website. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, it's sold out at the moment, so apparently it's, it's popular as well. Um, but that obviously doesn't do it for us. The fact that there's people claiming that it works, the fact that um, it's not just being claimed, but you can buy stuff like this, what does it mean? It doesn't really mean anything, right? So as a, as a neuroscientist, what you do is you turn to scientific literature. And if you do that, you'll find that there's actually lots of publications about TDCS, about transcranial direct current stimulation. And what they do is they will also, almost, almost all of them, they will tell you that it works, that they had a population of patients or a population of volunteers, they did the stimulation, and what they found out is that um, they learned faster. But there's, there, there's a, again, you need to be somewhat uh, skeptic over here, because uh, there's a thing like publication bias. So what does that mean, publication bias? Publication bias means that um, it's much easier as a scientist to get things published that are positive results than to get things published that are negative results. So sure, all those people that maybe by coincidence found uh, something about TDCS that turned out to be um, positive, they, they could get to the, the good journals. And all of those out there, these anonymous working scientists that also tried it out but didn't um, get the opportunity to get in there, they may have had bigger problems in publishing it. So even when you're referring to uh, scientific literature, you always have to be skeptic whether this is like really the, the whole thing going on in the whole, in the whole field or whether it's, it's just the bias of things that are more spectacular and easier uh, to publish. But nonetheless, I, I was getting more confident looking at this. It looked, it looked interesting. It looked like there was like a coherent story. And the story is maybe not completely the sort of story 
that you might think. You might think the brain is an electric organ, I'm applying electricity, so apparently this electricity is just um, creating extra energy in my brain and making it uh, work faster or at a, at a bigger level or so. The picture that emerged from um, the TDCS literature is that it actually works through um, a biochemical pathway, and there's one key molecule in that, and that key, key molecule is called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Brain-derived, the brain makes it itself. Neurotrophic, it makes, um, it makes neurons, it makes brain cells grow, and the factor basically just says it's a molecule, right? So, so what happens, according to literature, uh, through TDCS, is that you stimulate this brain, the brain starts making this one molecule. It's, it's known from all kinds of studies that BDNF is indeed a so-called neuromodulator, so it, it enhances all the, all the processes that underlie learning in, uh, in your brain, it enhances that, so, so it, 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 it could work. There's massive production of BDNF just due to these electrodes that are over there, and yes, this might make you want to learn. So this, this triggered this research line that I just was referring to, and we actually, uh, being in the sort of lab that I'm in, uh, we decided to do that according to several lines. So, so we did things in, in healthy human subjects, but we also did um, some other experiments. But first of all, we had to define what sort of task we want people to learn in, because you could make people learn new French words or maybe something else, else co cognitive. But we decided to do this in a motor learning task. And why would we do this in a motor learning task? Motor learning is just learning a new skill, basically, right? We would do this in a motor learning task because motor behavior is something that you can really quantitatively measure. You can just see how well people are actually performing in a very straightforward way. To give you sort of an impression about the sort of motor learning task that we would do or what it actually is a motor learning task, we have uh, two uh, volunteers over here, uh, Lisette and Fabien, uh, Fabian, sorry, Fabian. Um, so if you would join me on stage. And they will give you a little sort of demonstration of the sort of experiment um, that we would do in the lab. So both Lisette and Fabian have a really simple task. Lisette um, has the simple task of throwing balls. And life for Fabian is even easier because he's just going to be the target uh, over there. Um, <laughs> Um, now, during the general rehearsals, we, we found out that Lisette is actually a pretty good uh, thrower. She, she can do this. So we're going to make life a little uh, harder for her, and that's, that's where the, the learning, um, the motor learning comes in. She's, she's going to wear these goggles over here. And these goggles are so-called prism goggles. And basically what they do, just like the image that you see behind me, is that they redirect the direction of light, right? So if, if Lisette is wearing these uh, glasses over here, and she sees Fabian uh, straight ahead, then actually he's not straight ahead, he's, he's, he's off the side. So if she tries to throw a ball and, and go ahead and, and, and do whatever you want, you see, she's going to be off, she's, she's not going to hit him. But she's, she's a learner, so um, um, in, a, in a couple of trials, hopefully, obviously, she's getting better, and she will be able to reach uh, Fabian, and, and just after three, four, maybe five throws, She's close enough, and this is like a deviation of almost 45 degrees, right? She's able to coordinate her actions so that he can actually catch the ball. So let's do another one, one last one. And um, just to show you that she's now actually learned to, to adapt her behavior to do other things, if you would return the glasses to me, uh, then of course there's a very clear prediction that now if she would th have thrown the ball and she knows that life is different, off she goes in the wrong direction. <laughs> Thank you very much. So typically, this, this just shows you that, that motor learning is something that you can learn fast. And if you want to do this in the lab, and you want to make it faster, then obviously you need a, a more complicated task. And I'm, I'm not going to go too much into detail about that. Um, so we had our task about, about motor learning, adjust, adjusting your movements. We had to pick the ideal subjects. And after um, a short while of thinking, we decided that our ideal subjects would actually not be humans, but they would be mice. And a team of... Uh, a few young scientists in my lab, and that's uh, Suman Das, a young scientist from India, and Marcella Spoor, a young scientist from the Netherlands, and Tafatva Sibindi, a young scientist from 
uh, from Zimbabwe. They teamed up together and they sort of devised their, their own equivalent of a ball throwing task uh, for mice. Um, they would then see whether these mice learned faster. And the good thing about mice, for instance, is that things like a placebo effect, the subject knows what's expected from, from him or her, uh, does not occur that much in mice. The other good thing about mice, and we'll get to that later, is that you can do some experiments that, that might be frowned upon if you would do them in humans as well. Um, so they did that. They, um, first of all, did, did the motor learning task in mice. And what they found is, uh, what we found in our lab, is that indeed these mice learn faster. They learn faster, they have a faster motor learning if you stimulate the right part of their brain, which happens to be for motor learning the cerebellum. So you would have to have a, an electrode here at the back of your head. Um, so that's good. So, so, so we have like a confirmation in a completely different model that TDCS actually does uh, stuff. The second, the second experiment was to then actually look what's going on in the brain. So we got ourselves some electrodes that we did not stick on the brain, but we had some electrodes that we put in the brain to record brain activity. And what we found is, yes, that activity in the cerebellum is considerably higher, and the, the cerebellum is considerably more active if you've done this TDCS stimulation. And not just during the stimulation, but actually for, for times up to half an hour afterwards, this stimulation would be, uh, this higher activity could be seen. And that's compatible with the notion that it's not like the direct um, electrical effect, but there must be some chemical, right? There's, there's no way that you, your brain remembers a current for like, for like half an hour, but a molecule can, can easily stay there for like half an hour. So we saw that as well. And uh, the third thing that we uh, saw is if we, if we actually do this in specific mouse mutants that, that do not have this BDNF, where BDNF is not as active as it is in normal healthy mice, we found that those mice really have no benefit whatsoever from, uh, from the stimulation. So, so yes, we can also confirm um, that BDNF is the critical factor here, that BDNF is the factor through which this process works. Okay, so what has my lab achieved? We have really fast learning mice. Um, <laughs> how does that actually affect all of us here? Well, I think, and, and uh, clearly part of that is, this is future, but, but I, th I think there, there, there's some really promising things going on. Um, you could, for instance, imagine that in a year from now, a couple of years from now, actually in my lab we're doing this experimentally or we're setting this up, um, a typical rehabilitation clinic where people who have suffered from stroke um, and this affects like hundreds of thousands of people uh, a year, right? Um, you've had a stroke, you have motor problems, there's this massive reorganization going on in your brain. And um, if you would just do your usual phys physical therapy doing that and at the same time be stimulated by uh, electrodes on the right spot, on the contralateral side probably of, of where your stroke was, to help you reorganize faster so that times get shorter, which is good for everyone, right? It's, it's economically very interesting, but it's also interesting for the patient not to spend too much time in a rehabilitation clinic because they're, they're not very interesting environments to, to spend your life in. Um, and what we're surely also hoping for is that the endpoint will get, get better so that the outcome of the rehabilitation is better than what, um, uh, what you would get without the TDCS stimulation. And this is something, this is a trend. This is, I'm saying we're doing this in my lab, but there's different labs throughout the world um, with different approaches trying to see whether something like this could be f feasible in the near future. My other prediction is that in, uh, in the Olympics, in Rio, there will be talk of electrical doping. I'm predicting headlines saying that athletes have been caught using electrical doping, and I hope that you then will remember this, this TED talk uh, here in Delft. Um, and why do we expect that? Well, well basically because because for these athletes, where really the last one or two percent in extra performance is going to help. It's not going to make you stronger, right? It's not going not to help you in your stamina, but it's going to help you in, your, in the brain part of sports, so, so in your motor control. Um, 
I think, seriously think that, that athletes will find this and they're going to use it. And you might even uh, wonder whether this is doping or w is this something compared to like eating healthy food, which every athlete should do as well. It's going to um, um, make you improve yourself, but, but in the end you're just using your, your own natural plasticity mechanisms and molecules that are going on um, in your brain. So, electrical doping. To what extent is it really reasonable now to run off, go to the hardware store, get these sponges? For instance, when you're studying for your next exam, stick these electrodes on and, and help. Um, my guess is, to be very honest, this is not going to help you too much. And why is that? Well, first of all, it's not going to help you too much because, like I said, the, the TDCS is going to help you in those, those extra percents and probably uh, just by studying in a very concentrated way, um, it's just going to get you fine there anyway. And, and that's, we can sort of see that, right? I mean, evolution has geared us up with a perfect uh, way of being able to learn. And um, of course, it's great to do uh, extra stimulation and make sure that things get better. But in the end, um, for a, a healthy human being in a, in a normal learning environment, the effects will be, and that's my, again my prediction, we never know what's going on, but these effects are going to be in the order of, uh, of persons. So to conclude on that, um, if you want to be limitless, limitless just, just realize that actually at the moment you're pretty limitless as you are. Thank you very much.